August 13th, 2019 Zoning and Land Regulation Committee. First item on the agenda is public comment on any matter not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to speak on a matter not listed on the agenda will have five minutes to speak. The issue may be placed on a future agenda at the chair's discretion to allow the committee to further discuss the issue. Is there anyone wishing to speak? All right, before we continue the meeting, I'd like to make introductions of committee members and staff, followed by a brief overview of the committee meeting. Uh, the members of the committee, Chair Jared Bollig and uh, Supervisor Steve Peters are not here. Um, to my right, we have Supervisor Heidi Wegleitner, Kristen Audette, um, I am Jason Knoll. Staff that are present, we've got Planning and Development Director Todd Violanti, Zoning Administrator Roger Lane, and Assistant Zoning Administrator Dan Everson. And joining us for the first time tonight, our Youth Governance Member Julia Amon. So welcome. All right, this is the ZLR committee work meeting. Public hearings have been held at previous meetings for the items listed on the agenda. The committee will not be taking public testimony on these agenda items. However, committee members may call upon persons to speak on an agenda item if there are any questions or concerns. When a petition is called, county staff will update the committee on the status of the petition. Committee members may have concerns or questions. After discussion, the decision may be rendered. If a zoning petition is acted upon, it will be placed on the next county board meeting for action, which is September 5th. If a conditional use permit is acted upon, it is the county's final action on the matter. The next ZLR committee meeting will be held on August 27th. All right, so we are now on to consideration of the minutes. We've got the minutes of the July 9th committee meeting and the minutes of the July 23rd committee meeting. Anybody wishing to? Move to approve. Second. So moved. Uh, any questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the minutes have are uh, approved. All right. Skipping item D, <coughs> now on to item E: zoning map amendments and conditional use permits from previous meetings. The first up is petition rezone one one three seven nine. Well, this petition was postponed at the February 12th, uh, 2019 Zoning and Land Regulation Committee. The petition was postponed for various reasons. Uh, first of all, it was not complying with the town's comprehensive plan. Uh, the, there was also concerns with uh, stormwater management and uh, potential flooding of the uh, subdivision. And third, uh, how the, there was a question on how the lots were going to be serviced uh, with uh, either sanitary sewer or a septic system. So there were some major items uh, that were uh, uh, an issue as of February. Since that time, uh, the town of Middleton has revised their comprehensive plan. Uh, the previous comprehensive plan showed this area to be a golf course, which it is an existing, I believe it's tumble down golf course. Yeah, okay, okay, there we go. Uh, and uh, what is happening is uh, a residential component is being incorporated into the tumble down uh, golf course. So the town comprehensive plan was revised and approved by the county board and was uh, adopted. So that takes care of item one. The second concern was uh, with stormwater management and flooding. Uh, the Weiser Engineering uh, completed their uh, flood analysis. It also was reviewed by the City of Madison engineering staff. Uh, some significant changes uh, were made to it. Uh, the channel that goes through the subdivision uh, was definitely uh, made a lot deeper uh, and uh, more open space was added to the east side there to accommodate the uh, additional stormwater that's going to be going through that area. In addition, the City of Madison, uh, uh, due to their extraterritorial jurisdiction authority, uh, they are requiring a, uh, a minimum elevation uh, opening height so that, well, as the uh, channel fills up with water, uh, they don't want any opening on a residential house to be any lower to a certain level. So that will be established uh, to provide some reassurances that the uh, houses in that area will not be flooded. 
Um, the, uh, the, the stormwater and uh, flooding, um, that uh, the engineering plans are being reviewed by Dane County Land and Water Resources, uh, Beer Becker and Associates, as well as the City of Madison. So, I mean, there's <coughs> review processes going all through that to ensure that uh, the stormwater in this area can adequately flow through to the east and to the south. The, um, the uh, developer is still working on the city of Madison, wants some um, easements uh, further uh, east off the property uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the stormwater can flow uh, in the southerly direction. So uh, that's still being worked on, but that is off the property. Uh, the last thing is uh, servicing of the lots. The servicing of the, of the lots, I'm happy to inform you that the, uh, the Capital Area Regional Planning Commission has reviewed the urban service area uh, amendment uh, and they have recommended approval to the Wisconsin DNR to amend the water quality plan to include this area into the urban service area. So what does that mean is that this area will be serviced by um, uh, sanitary sewer. However, they'll have wells, uh, but it'll be picked up by MMSD. Uh, and uh, so uh, that means that the lots could be smaller to increase density uh, and uh, somewhat have less urban sprawl. So the density is there. Uh, with that said, uh, it, it, um, all the items that uh, staff uh, <coughs> brought up on February 10th have been resolved. Um, staff is suggesting that uh, four conditions be placed on uh, the rezoning of this property. One being that the, uh, it be contingent upon the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resource approve the urban service area amendment for the property. Uh, this, uh, the town city agreement for the extension of the sanitary sewer service is approved. Uh, a subdivision plat is recorded uh, per chapter 236 of the Wisconsin statutes. And a developer's agreement between the developer and the town uh, be approved and executed prior to the recording of the final plat. Is that right? Can, we, can we do have... Jeff Payne, uh, who is registered in support. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns about this right now for staff or Commissioner Haynes? Um, uh, question. Okay. There was a reference to um, the city of Madison with the DOT issue of the International City Sewer um, at the August 6th meeting, but in reviewing my minutes, I did not see where that did not fell. It didn't look like it had been on, so I was just wondering if we had more information about that. Hmm. From the CARPC, uh, you're talking about the CARPC <laughs> action on the urban Yeah, there, urban because I checked with CARPC today, and yes, it was <coughs> recommended, the urban service area was recommended uh, uh, to the Wisconsin DNR for approval. Uh, I do not know about the City of Madison Common Council, but the information that we have received from uh, uh, city staff is that it's all favorable, and they have worked out significant uh, uh, items. Maybe the developer may have more information on that. It was approved at Common Council on July 16th, the sewer grant. Oh, well that's why it wasn't on the <laughs> August 6th minute. Okay, thank thank you. you. Anybody else? Questions or concerns? I'll move approval of the conditions. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Next up is Petition Rezone 11436. 
Yes, this petition was postponed at the July 23rd Zoning and Land Regulation Committee meeting due to no town action since that time. The town board has taken this uh, matter up. They have approved it, uh, conditioned upon the final certified survey back being reviewed by the town board. Uh, since uh, this was first reviewed by the Zoning and Land Regulation Committee, they have revised uh, uh, the certified survey map lot by uh, shrinking the lot this way and expanding it this way. The reason why this was expanded was to allow uh, a driveway path uh, to be on the lot. Uh, because this is the Wisconsin, or the Yahara River, uh, uh, there is a 75 foot setback for any uh, impervious development area. So a driveway would be an impervious surface and so it has to stay 75 feet away. The uh, lot has been widened so that uh, to accommodate that driveway. I had Assistant Zoning Administrator uh, Hans Hilbert take a look at this to see if it actually could be developed and meet impervious surface standards and he said yes, it's, it, it's a design that could uh, meet the shoreland regulations. Um, and that's about it. So are we still, do we still need to wait then upon the town? Oh, the town has approved this uh, with a condition. Oh, right, are we still yeah. waiting on that condition then, or did that? No, okay. it, it could, uh, that could be part of uh, the uh, approval, okay. if, if approved. Right. And we have Eric Grover, registered, <coughs> wishing to speak in support. No, I just oh, if your additional in case you had questions available okay. for information. Okay, does anybody have any questions or concerns for staff or Mr. Grover? What was the town condition? Uh, they want to see the final certified survey map uh, because I believe they uh, want some reassurances on the driveway for like emergency turnaround. Uh, the town of Dunkirk does not have uh, uh, very robust uh, driveway ordinances, so they want to catch it at the certified survey map time to put some conditions on to make sure the driveway is uh, good for emergency services. And it looks like staff is recommending postponement until the town's had an opportunity to review that, is it, or is that the old? Oh, oh yeah, that's old, okay. that's old. The staff update, uh, we would recommend uh, uh, approval uh, conditioned upon the final certified survey map being reviewed by the okay. town board, which it, it would be All right. in, in any event. Great, thank you. Are there any final motions? I'll move to approve. Next up is petition for rezone 11437. Uh, yes, this uh, petition was postponed at the last meeting due to uh, no town action. Uh, this is in the town of Rutland. One of the interesting uh, items with this petition, it is a transfer of development rights. Uh, it is uh, in the northwest corner of uh, the town of Dunkirk. There's one property that still has a housing density right on it. Uh, it's kind of uh, uh, hydro soils and stuff, so it's not really uh, the greatest su has suitability for a house. Uh, so they are transferring that down uh, to another property. Um, and uh, the town has reviewed this, uh, and the town has approved this uh, with no conditions. I believe uh, I didn't update that. Sorry. Uh, the town has approved that. I believe in in your packet there is the town approval, and uh, you may have. I think uh, the staff report is updated. Hopefully, I switched that. 
the around it, and it has improved the snow conditions. Uh, and staff is, because this is a uh, transfer of development rights, uh, there's some language that needs to be put on the sending property and on the receiving property so we could track housing density rights uh, accordingly. So staff is suggesting that uh, the standard three conditions uh, be placed on uh, both properties. Thank you. And again, we have Mr. Grover registered uh, available for information. Any questions for either staff or Mr. Grover? up we have CDP 02452. Uh, yes, this is a conditional use permit. A conditional use permit is for a substation for uh, Wisconsin Power and Light. Uh, this petition was postponed at the March 26th meeting uh, due to no town action. The town had some concerns with the flooding in the area because of uh, Highway 39, uh, Interstate 39. Uh, being reconstructed, a lot of the stormwater management uh, uh, or the drainage kind of moved around kind of bit, uh, quite a bit. So uh, the town was concerned uh, and was hesitant to approve uh, the conditional use permit until such time as the stormwater uh, management uh, uh, was approved for the site. Uh, since that time, the uh, uh, Wisconsin Power and Light uh, did obtain uh, their uh, stormwater management plan, and so uh, the uh, town was uh, accepting of that and has approved the uh, petition with no conditions. Um, also, since since March, uh, the town has adopted our new zoning ordinance, and our new or or zoning ordinance. Uh, uh, due to the updates, has a lot of the standard conditions. Uh, uh, originally, this was uh, suggested to have 13 conditions, uh, and they were like the whole standard, but they're already in our ordinance and could be covered just by one condition that says, hey, uh, you're gonna follow the standard conditions. So um, this has been approved by the uh, town board uh, with no conditions, however, staff is suggesting three conditions be placed on the conditional use permit that the applicant landowner uh, uh, comply with these standard conditions set forth in the um, zoning ordinance. Uh, they obtained highway access permit from the county highway department and that the uh, landowner is permitted to construct one 100-foot monopole tower in order to provide communication links for unstaffed stations. All right. Thank you. And wishing to speak in support, we've got Jerome Lund. Yes. Hi. I'm Jerome Lund. I work for Alliance Energy. I just wanted to uh, let you folks know that we did, we did get our stormwater permit from the DNR and also our erosion permit from St. County and also our uh, access permit from St. County. We get a driveway and all kind of hooked up, so there's one less thing to ride along. <laughs> and I'm just here to ask some questions. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for either staff or Mr. Lund? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, next up, Section F, plats and certified survey maps. Yeah, uh, this one is uh, in the village of Cottage Grove, so it's before you for a certification of non-objection. Uh, the name of this plat is Shady Grove. Certified by this committee uh, with 
no objections uh, July of 2017. But now it's coming back uh, before you again because they've changed uh, kind of the layout of the streets and the lots. They've re reduced the number of lots to 62, where previously it was 72. So uh, there's four outlots shown, a little over 36 acres. Outlot three is being dedicated to the public for park purposes. Uh, bus road is going to be considered a parkway uh, with a width of uh, 100 feet uh, wide. Uh, that'll be dedicated to the public for road purposes. Major corridors, you have Highway BB uh, adjacent to the north. Uh, drainage and stormwater easements are shown throughout the plat. Schools are established uh, basically across the street. And then outlots one and two are dedicated to the public for stormwater management. All right. Yeah. Any questions? Certify motion no objection. certification of non objection. Motion to certify without objection. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And next up we've got Kennedy Hills. This one is in the town of Cotter's Grove. This is a final plat as well, Kennedy Hills. Uh, section 10, town of, town of Cotter's Grove, 18 residential lots, or I'm sorry, uh, 18 lots overall, with uh, two outlots shown. A little over 21 acres, and this is associated with rezone petition 11283 that changed the zoning from agricultural to a single family residential district. Uh, the nice thing about this plat is it's very simple, there's no sensitive environmental features uh, within this plat. And as far as any changes uh, from this go around compared to the preliminary plat, uh, basically the only thing that's changed is the, the configuration and the name of the roads. So there was just a real minor issue with. Uh, Dan Frick, our county surveyor, with regards to the naming of the roads and how far they extended past the intersection. Mm -hmm. So the surveyor, um, which is also the developer in this case, uh, tweaked the name of the roads and Dan Frick was just content. So that issue is resolved and then everything else is, uh, for the most part, fairly straightforward. Um, I don't know if you want me to go through each and every condition, but it's the same as, the, as it was with the preliminary plan. Fifteen conditions. Yep. There. Yep. Any questions? Then I would entertain a motion to approve with the conditions. So if this is approved, you'll see this one more time, and that's for the final signature before the plat can be uh, recorded. But before the chair of this committee signs off on the plat, all the other necessary signatures must be obtained first. So the owner certificate. So this is before you for a conditional approval. Okay. I'll certify the approval with the condition. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And approved with conditions. Moving down to section J, report of approved certified survey maps. Yeah, so this is the report that's uh, basically uh, since the last time we met, which would be three weeks ago. And just to provide a little bit of background for you, these are uh, certified survey maps um, that have been signed by myself, reviewed by myself, as well as the county surveyor. And so I'm basically updating this committee of which ones have been signed and approved and recorded. So some of them are associated with a rezone application, some of them are not. Roger may get into that a little bit later with you. So. so when we get into the orientation, one of uh, the authorities that the Zoning and Land Regulation Committee has is uh, 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 subdivision review and, and approval authority. So with subdivisions, as we had two here uh, tonight, or at least one in the town, uh, the Zoning and Land Regulation Committee held that authority. Uh, with certified survey maps, and they're kind of smaller subdivision plats, they're no more than four lots, uh, 
the Zoning and Land Regulation Committee granted the authority to Mr. Everson to review all the certified survey maps for them and approve uh, them if it's associated with a rezone. So uh, you'll see them come before this committee if, uh, if it's in one of the towns or the zoning is acquired and they are shifting property lines around, it'll be before this committee because Mr. Everson does not have that authority. So we are on to other business as authorized by law. Seeing none, okay. entertaining a motion to adjourn. I move. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we are adjourned. I need your signature.